So, okay, guys, I'm going to read the first chapter, and this will kind of give you an idea of who I am and what I've been all my life. And the name of the chapter is A Gun, Two Bullets, and Me. Someone told me not very long ago that if you interfere in someone's life and try to change their path, you're building up karma. I truly believe in karma and that made me nervous because all of my life, I have always been involved in the lives of many women, giving them advice or support. I don't feel like I'm altering their path or journey because that's up to them. It's their choice. I stand behind women no matter what they decide to do because ultimately it is their decision. I just give my opinion and they can take it or leave it. It doesn't matter to me. When I was 32, I worked in a clothing store in St. Louis with my close friend, Sally. Sally and Bill, her husband, had been married about 25 years and they were about 10 years older than Mike and me and we became very good friends. They lived in a beautiful home in the suburbs with a gorgeously landscaped backyard and swimming pool. Bill owned a construction company and did quite well financially. He was a very handsome guy who happened to be just a little bit chauvinistic. <laughs> and not a little bit, but a lot. Uh, he thought it was a wife's duty to take care of her husband. Therefore, Sally was the type of wife who did everything for him. If he wanted water, she'd get up and get it without hesitation. One day, Sally came into the store yelling, if I have to match one more pair of socks, I am going to scream. Thank goodness the store was empty. I looked up from the display I was arranging and I saw the frustration etched on her face. I said, then don't do it. I don't match anybody's socks. They can match their own socks. She paused, eyes wide in disbelief, and she said, really? I said, yes, if you don't wanna do it, then don't. Naturally, she went home and shared my words with Bill. I could sense that this was the start of Sally's journey toward becoming stronger and more independent. She was unhappy with many aspects of her marriage. I realized that her lack of independence was becoming increasingly troubling to her, and I knew I had to support her in any way I could. Bill became very unhappy with me as he thought I was destroying their marriage. He believed I was influencing her too much and that I was interfering and putting ideas in her head. I told him, no, she is becoming her own person. She is being who she wants to be and I have nothing to do with it. I am just supporting her. The tension was extreme between Bill and me and there were times when I thought that if he had a gun, he could kill me. He was so angry. Sally didn't know that Bill was talking to me behind her back, accusing me of breaking up their marriage and ruining their life. I didn't tell Sally or Mike what was happening because again, it was just between Bill and me. One night I was supposed to go over to their house for dinner, but after a long day of standing on my feet at work, I was in no mood to confront Bill. I called Sally and said, I can't do it. I'm too tired and I just have to go home. She sounded disappointed when she said, oh my gosh, Bill is going to be so unhappy because he really wanted to see you tonight. I thought to myself, well, that's interesting because I'm sure I'm the last person he wanted to see because I'm the one that's ruining his life. So I went home, took off my shoes and had a glass of wine. About two hours later, I got a phone call from Sally. Jean, yes. Bill just killed himself. This man put a gun in his mouth and blew his head off right in front of her. It was almost dusk, so she saw the whole thing, brains and all, scattered around the pool. She was very calm on the phone, so I assumed she was still in shock. After a moment, she very quietly said, Jean, there were two bullets 
in the gun. Holy cow. I thought, oh my gosh, she doesn't know this, but that second, that first bullet was for me. She told me that he firmly said right before he took his life, I am in control of everything. I strongly believe that if I had been there, Bill would have killed me and then shot himself. He wanted me out of the picture completely. In my opinion, Bill's real intention was to destroy Sally's future and traumatize her by making her witness my murder and then his violent death. I believe he wanted to show that he was always in control and aimed to kill me in front of her to reinforce this. He would never have killed Sally. He just wanted to punish her. I know it was me he blamed for everything. As I write this book, I realize it was a close call and I should have been terrified, but I wasn't. I take no responsibility for this incident. We all make decisions that can change the whole course of our lives. And that was Bill's decision. I will always support women and give them advice if they ask me. This is who I am. I call it my two cents worth. Take it or leave it. If Sally wanted to keep matching socks until she was 100 years old, so be it. That would be her decision. Now, I know that's a strong story, but I hope that it tells you, you know, so the questions afterwards is when have you, you know, got the little workbook, you know, when have you supported someone without imposing your views onto them? You know, like, cause like I say, I, it's not up to me. I mean, I supported her and what happened happened and it was tragic, but she was, I don't know, she didn't really seem to be that upset about it because I think she really was realizing that their relationship was over. But, uh, and how have your beliefs about karma influenced your action? I happen to really believe in karma. I don't know about you all. So that's, you know, another whole subject. Um, and when did your actions lead to surprising results? It's funny because when I wrote the book, I really had forgotten. That happened when I was 32, and I really had forgotten about it until a good friend of mine that I had lost touch with for 10 years, she wrote me one day and she said, Jean, whatever happened to your friend whose husband killed himself? And so the whole story came back to me and I thought, oh my gosh, that is some kind of story. I wanted to write it because I wanted to say, I mean, I don't, and when I say I don't take responsibility for it, I don't want that to sound too strong. I don't want it to sound, you know, cocky or to sound, I, I don't know. I just don't want it to sound like I didn't care, you know, because I did, but it, it still was his decision to make. I just, you know, I can't believe he did it. She seemed to get over it very quickly. Um, somebody said to me, is she still alive today? And I'm like, I, I don't know, I lost track of her, but she was 10 years older, so if I'm 85, she's 95. And she, I changed the names, and I, if she would read it, she would understand. But it's just a, a I try, I hope, I, want to believe that when I give advice on here, on Facebook, wherever I do it, that it doesn't affect somebody's life traumatically. And if it does, then I just, I, I you know, I can't help it because I'm just trying to support women. I've done it all my life. I've supported women since high school by the book and um, you know I, I enjoyed writing it and um, I will see you tomorrow morning at 1030 and I'm glad that a lot of you are on here so thank you very much I love you all so much bye